Hello, my name is Darren Lee, and I'm an assistant professor of uh, neurosurgery at the University of Southern California. My primary focus is in uh, stereotactic and functional neurosurgery, and I have a keen interest in neuro neuromodulation for cognitive and psychiatric disorders. Uh, I have no disclosures, however, my funding as is below. Yeah. So as a functional neurosurgeon, uh, we, we are involved in a number of uh, procedures uh, that have to do with either neuromodulation, lesioning, uh, as well as uh, CSF diversion. Specifically with regards to neuromodulation, uh, I focus on deep brain stimulation, responsive, ne ne uh, responsive neurostimulation, vagal nerve stimulation, spinal cord stimulation, and peripheral nerve stimulation. Some of the uh, lesioning procedures that are performed here are uh, percutaneous rhizotomies, myelotomies, and chordotomies. And then with respect to our CSF diversion, uh, I focus on uh, ventricular peritoneal shunts, lumboperitoneal shunts, endoscopic third ventriculostomies, and endoscopic fenestrations. Um, some of the diseases that we uh, treat here include movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, and dystonia. Uh, we also do a wide range of uh, surgical uh, treatments for epilepsy, in including uh, uh, SEG, uh, deep brain stimulation, RNS, VNS, and surgical resections. Additionally, I uh, perform a number of pain procedures uh, for either trigeminal neuralgia or various uh, forms of low back pain. We also are uh, keenly involved with uh, a number of hydrocephalus or CSF uh, flow problems, including normal pressure hydrocephalus, uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, and uh, various f uh, types of cysts. Additionally, I'm interested in psychiatric disorders, uh, such as obs obsessive compulsive disorder. We're cur currently also involved in a number of investigational studies uh, uh, using neuromodulation for either Alzheimer's disease and schizophrenia. So uh, as a functional neurosurgeon, we're very interested in uh, brain circuit dysfunction. Um, and brain circuit dysfunction is impaired in a number of cognitive and psychiatric disorders, includes, including things like Parkinson's disease, uh, Alzheimer's disease, disease, epilepsy, and other uh, psychiatric disorders like OCD, addiction, and depression. Uh, thus, a number of my clinical and research interests are focused on these circuit dysfunctions in these cognitive and psychiatric realms. Now, our movement disorder uh, specialty very much relies on a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, including this team are neurologists, neuropsychologists, and neurosurgeons. Uh, as such, we're involved in deep brain stimulation for things like Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, and dystonia. Specifically, uh, with regards to Parkinson's disease, uh, it's the uh, second most uh, common progressive neurodegenerative disorder, and the, the pr uh, predominant symptoms are kind of these uh, bradykinesia, uh, resting tremor, and rigidity. Uh, now, while most uh, treatment, medication and surgical, are focused on these kind of clinical core uh, symptoms or cardinal symptoms of P Parkinson's disease, uh, a number of these patients also uh, suffer from cognitive de decline. Uh, in a number of uh, cognitive uh, domains, including executive function, attention, processing, processing speed, episodic memory, and visual spatial processing. Um, now, the current stimulation parameters are a high frequency uh, stimulation anywhere between 100 to 180 hertz. However, most physiologic uh, oscillations are in a lower, lower range. I'm, we're particularly interested in some of the low frequency oscillations, particularly in the theta uh, range which is the 5 to 12 hertz range, because these are implicated in uh, mechanisms of spatial and episodic memory. Um, one of the targets uh, for deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's disease is the subthalamic nucleus. And these low frequency or theta oscillations are significantly involved in uh, uh, executive function, uh, such as verbal fluency, working memory, uh, res response inhibition, and sensory motor conflict. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we're interested in, uh, as one of our kind of research interests, looking at seeing it to see if there are various ways to alter stimulation parameters to potentially improve some of these uh, cognitive uh, domains. Here we see some uh, research that we've done at uh, USC. We're actually able to improve verbal fluency with low frequency stimulation as opposed to the standard uh, high frequency stimulation parameters. Uh, therefore, currently we are involved in a number of uh, clinical studies. Uh, 
potentially trying to look and see if we can alter or improve uh, cognitive, co cognition and verbal fluency with the DBS for Parkinson's disease, including looking at uh, alternative uh, anatomical targets for DBS, as well as alternative stimulation parameters for DBS. As I mentioned before, we're interested in uh, using neuromodulation for, uh, uh, to improve cognition. Uh, one of the uh, studies that we're involved in is a deep brain stimulation for Alzheimer's disease trial. Currently, there's a uh, phase three clinical trial called the ADVANCE-2 trial, looking at bilateral fornicial deep brain stimulation. Uh, we're using uh, this bilateral uh, fornicial DBS uh, for inpatients with mild Alzheimer's disease. This is a prospective multicenter double-blind randomized trial uh, where we're one of uh, uh, about 20 sites trying to enroll uh, about 210 mild uh, Alzheimer's patients for this DBS study. Uh, in this particular study, we're looking at uh, doing a randomi randomization between no stimulation, low frequency stimulation, and high frequency stimulation in these Alzheimer's patients as seen below. So in addition to uh, using DBS for uh, cog cognitive disorders or cognition issues like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease, uh, we're also uh, involved, we also have developed a, a cerebral spinal fluid diversion center. This also is a multidisciplinary team with a number of subspecialties including neurology, neuroradiology, neuroophthalmology, neurology, our PT and OT colleagues, and neurosurgery. Uh, in this center, we do, uh, treat a number of disorders like normal pressure hydrocephalus, obstructive hydrocephalus, uh, pseudotumor, and arachnoid cysts. We have a particular interest actually in normal pressure hydrocephalus. This is uh, typically a disease process um, with a triad of symptoms including gait disturbance, uh, urinary incontinence, and cognitive uh, deterioration. Interesting enough though, this is uh, one of the only dementia syndromes that's actually reversible uh, through C uh, CSF diversion, including uh, ventricular peritoneal shunts and lumbar peritoneal shunts. Therefore, we have a keen interest in really trying to understand the underlying mechanism. Currently, it is uh, unknown. However, we are doing a number of studies looking at uh, the differences in uh, potentially uh, blood-brain barrier dysfunction, uh, looking at CSF and serum bar biomarkers, as well as looking at uh, advanced imaging, including uh, diffusion-weighted arterial spin labeling uh, to help with quantification of uh, uh, water exchange rates across the blood-brain barrier. In addition to cognitive and movement disorders, uh, we're also interested in pain neurosurgery, uh, with specific interest in things like trigeminal neuralgia, uh, as well as back pain and neuropathic pain. With regards to trigeminal neuralgia, we have a number of uh, ways to treat uh, this disease process, including micro open surgery, uh, including open surgery uh, such as microvascular decompression, uh, lesioning, including gamma knife radio surgery, percutaneous rhizotomy, and neurectomies. Finally, we have neuromodulatory techniques, including peripheral nerve stimulation, to help with the treatment of uh, trigeminal neuralgia. With regards to uh, back pain and neuropathic pain, I have a specialty in uh, neuromodulation, including spinal cord stimulation. The underlying mechanism of pain is not clearly understood. Therefore, we have a keen interest in uh, studying and understanding the underlying causes of uh, pain. Uh, we, at USC, we have uh, at USC, we have current studies using advanced imaging techniques, including MRI, such as tractography, as well as functional uh, connectivity studies to understand the underlying uh, causes of pain. Additionally, we have advanced imaging or functional ultrasound imaging to look at the underlying uh, mechanism for spinal cord stimulation. Finally, I'd like to briefly discuss uh, some of the advances done in uh, neuromodulation for psychiatric indications. At USC, we have a uh, DBS for OCD multidisciplinary group that also includes psychologists and psychiatrists. In addition, in addition we, there are, we have active uh, investigational studies uh, looking at deep brain stimulation for schizophrenia. A lot of my translational uh, neuroscience work in the lab looks at uh, various forms of DBS for uh, schizophrenia. In that vein, we also have parallel studies using tra uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation for various aspects of schizophrenia. I'd like to thank all of my collaborators, including all of those in my basic science lab, as well as the USC Neuro Restoration Center, or my collaborators at, in psychiatry, neurology, and the Lonnie Imaging Institute. I'd also like to thank our collaborators in, at the University of Toronto, 
at Caltech at, at UC Riverside. Thank you.